FBI Director Christopher Wray uh, yesterday a stunning warning about the threat uh, of communist China and Chinese hackers. Uh, the head of the FBI saying that the issue requires the U.S.'s attention now during a House Select Committee on China hearing. Watch this. China's multi-pronged assault on our national and economic security make it the defining threat of our generation. There has been far too little public focus on the fact that PRC hackers are targeting our critical infrastructure. China's hackers are positioning on American infrastructure in preparation to wreak havoc and cause real-world harm to American citizens and communities if and when China decides the time has come to strike. And of course, we've been focused on this for several years now. Joining me right now is the founder of Atlas Organization. He's the author of The Decisive Decade, Jonathan D.T. Ward. Jonathan, uh, your thoughts on what you heard from Christopher Wray yesterday. The Chinese Communist Party has really stepped up its aggression against America, and they are now targeting some serious infrastructure in America. Right. So, um, you know, Director Ray, I think, is um, part of a long litany now of national security leaders that are trying to tell Americans how serious this is. And really what it amounts to is that China is preparing for war with the United States of America. Um, you know, I explained that in great depth in China's vision of victory. I mean, their history, their force structure, their general ambitions, but also the fact that apparently now they're going after our critical infrastructure, which means ports, rail, water treatment, um, electrical grid. We also have, I think we've had a series of very important hearings um, on the Hill here, and that includes the director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, who said, imagine not one pipeline, but many pipelines disrupted, telecommunications going down so people can't use their cell phones, people start getting sick from polluted wa uh, water, trains get derailed. I mean, this is the kind of thing. So on one hand, they're preparing to fight us in the Pacific, and that's all crystal clear. On another hand, they're funding and bankrolling America's adversaries from Russia and its war in Ukraine to Iran and its proxies in the Middle East. And then they're embedding themselves in our own critical infrastructure so that they can attack the homeland in the event of any moves that they might make um, in the Indo-Pacific. So really, that's part of the very near-term um, situation. And we have to remind ourselves, I mean, the rise of China was never going to be peaceful. It's really about the violent destruction of the U.S.-led order. And we're starting to see that take place. I think that's what we're generally uh, witnessing. Yeah, we are witnessing this. this, and unfortunately, the powers that be are not doing anything about it. I, I got to tell you, I'm getting a little frustrated with hearing Christopher Ray tell us how serious this issue is and then not doing anything about it. For example, the wide open border. How many of those hackers from China came into America through the wide open border? There were 28,000 last year and 1,800 so far this year, according to the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, Mark Green, who I just spoke with. Well, sure. And, and, you know, I haven't been to the border, so I'm not really able to comment on that. But I think what's going on is is pretty clear. I mean, this is not just about the Pacific. It's not just about what's going on overseas. They also have plans um, to target the U.S. directly. Um, and that's really always been an element of their, their thinking, is how to weaken, in their view, an right. adversary. And my, and my issue is, why are we not responding? I mean, there are some levels to push, right? I mean, the Prague Security Studies Institute is out with a new report. Um, we spoke with Roger Robinson, Jr. yesterday. This report identifies four, 40, 40 publicly traded companies, Chinese companies, with strategic links to Iran. Look at all these companies. They trade on our exchanges. They've attracted more than $6 billion in American investments. Uh, Roger Robinson, Jr. is the former senior director of international economic affairs at the Reagan National Security Council. Uh, he joined us uh, to discuss this report yesterday. Watch this. The role of the U.S. capital markets is, is extraordinary in terms of keeping Iran a going concern as we're on the cusp of a broader conflict. Not to mention the fact that China, as usual, walks away with impunity. Yeah. I mean, have there been capital market sanctions against those 40 companies, S several of which are already sanctioned by the United States, I might add? Mm. The answer is a flat no. And that is, is, is unconscionable. How is it possible that these companies <clears throat> trade on U.S. exchanges and some of them may be already sanctioned? Well, the attitude of the asset managers involved is if it's not illegal, we're doing it. And Jonathan, therein lies the issue. And they were enablers to Nazi Germany, I should point out, back in the 1930s, weren't there? 
Well, look, I mean, our capital markets is, um, has been one of the main reasons that, that China uh, became a superpower. I mean, their access to American capital and technology is a lot of what did that job. You know, the entire illusion of the rise of China, thinking that it would be peaceful, all of that. Uh, but if you look at this actual list of companies, and I've identified many of these companies in uh, my book, The Decisive Decade, because many of them are also operating in the Russia market, when the Chinese ambassador said, look, the Western companies are going to leave Russia now that the war in Ukraine has started, so Chinese companies have to go in. So, you know, it's basically the same list. I mean, the energy companies, the telecommunication companies, et cetera. There's a Politico scoop last year that talked about Norinco on here, one of the defense industrial corporations um, that was supplying assault rifles and body armor to the Russians for their invasion in Ukraine. So, you know, the bottom line is Chinese grand strategy happens through corporations. That's the important thing to understand. I mean, this isn't just about macroeconomics or military. I mean, it's literally companies that you can identify, companies that you could target, companies that you could take out if you were serious. Um, and this is just a small, small section of the list, and actual capital flows into the general uh, Chinese economy, all of which is essentially linked to the CCP and its grand strategic designs, um, are in the hundreds of billions each year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, I used Sinuk as one of the examples in China's vision of victory as a company that in its um, investor relations documents talks about its participation in Chinese grand strategies. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's how these companies work. I mean, so there, so these are the entities that, there, that one must go after if one's serious. There is right now networking from Huawei used in some American infrastructure. I mean, shouldn't that be just torn down, pulled out? Why would we have Huawei, which is a tool of the Chinese Communist Party for surveillance, in any of our networks, Jonathan? I mean, you write well, this in the decisive decade. Tell us how you would advise the United States to respond to all of this. I, I would start with economic strike packages against the entire civil military fusion and, um, you know, CCP-aligned uh, corporate corporate base. I mean, you could do a whole lot right there. The companies that are in Russia, the companies that are in Iran, and the companies that participate in human rights atrocities and civil military fusion. I mean, we can target these things. We learned how to do that with Huawei. We never finished the job, but we could. And I think that's actually relatively low-hanging fruit. I mean, the, the target list is very obvious. The sanctions pack packages are all, I think, pretty well established at this point. The issue there would be that they would be retaliating against our companies, which they are going to do anyway and eventually, which is why our leaders are going Going to need to get their businesses out of China as fast as they can before all the big stuff happens. Right. Um, but bottom line, we have a very, um, you know, important avenue in which to go broadly. Um, I think against China's general industrial base yeah. and its strategic industries through um, these kinds of companies. Yeah. And this is just a very small, small piece of that that whole chunk. Sure. And when you do that. Yeah. You start to slow that rise down permanently, put permanent economic disadvantages into the picture on the PRC side, and rebuild the gap between American power and Chinese power. Jonathan, we, and then we can play geopolitics to win. We've got to jump, but very quickly here. Um, when you say before all the big stuff happens, are you referring to China going into Taiwan? Well, I, th I think they have yeah. a whole series of things they might do in the Pacific. Okay. Jonathan, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Jonathan D.T. Ward, uh, we'll keep spotlight on it, as you know. Thank you, sir.